Hey pals, this is Blaine Hill with the Simply Stated Podcast and video devotionals streaming on Facebook from Lake Murray Presbyterian Church. Today is Tuesday. It's May the 19th in 2020. Um, big news is still coronavirus. Uh, I'm going to read to you from Deuteronomy today. Uh, I know it may seem a jump, but this is in De- Deuter- Deuteronomy. Try to say that twice fast. Deuteronomy chapter 6, it's the 10th to the 12th verse. Uh, it helps to know. Uh, Moses is leading God's people. He's led them out of slavery. Uh, they've been wandering in the desert, and they're about to head into the promised land, the land that God promised them, They're to return to the land of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So this is in chapter 6 of Deuteronomy. When the Lord your God has brought you into the land that he swore to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give you, a land with fine, large systems, the cisterns, a land with large cities you did not build, houses filled with all sorts of goods that you did not fill, hewn cisterns that you did not hew, vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. And when you've eaten your fill, take care that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. Uh, So what I want to talk to you about today is taking care not to forget the Lord. Um, The the, the book of Deuteronomy is a book of law. It's the second telling uh, of the law for God's people. And really what it does is it sets up God's people for when they enter into prosperity. They're still uh, wandering out. The setting is they're wandering out in the wilderness. And God is setting them up for how to live in abundance um, and to do so faithfully, which is surprisingly tempting to not live faithfully. And the key is that we take care not to forget the Lord. And I, this is important for us um, because of two conditions. One is, is larger. It's just pa- it's, it's p- past before and I believe it'll be after this corona pandemic. The first is um, our world, and certainly the U.S., is incredibly blessed, materially blessed. Uh, we have an abundance uh, that uh, has been provided for us from past generations. And a lot of that is the deliberate choice of previous generations to make sacrifices, to save, to establish uh, things like uh, cities or government, to establish those to hand on to the next generations. And, and if we're really candid about American history, well, really human history, a lot of the things we benefit from come from negative things that other people were forced to do. And that, that's just part of history. Here in the U.S., um, we benefit from the forced labor of other people in the past, in addition to the willing gifts of, of people. We enjoy benefits that we didn't earn. Uh, we weren't even alive to contribute to them. They were given to us by people in the past. Uh, here in South Carolina, here in the U.S., The truth is we enjoy a material abundance that is unsurpassed in human history. Uh, We have access to incredible things, things that kings didn't have access to. I'm enjoying air conditioning today. It's a little muggy, uh, but um, we have air conditioning. It's it's like a miracle 150 years ago. Um, And we live in a system of laws that gives a kind of uh, security that is really unusual in human history. Now, of course, there, there are people... Uh, who lack. You know, our school district is sending out school buses to carry school lunches to kids uh, who otherwise would go hungry. So there are definitely things that are wrong in our society, Um, but it's incredibly abundant. We live in one of the most uh, abundant times, the most abundant time in human history. Um, And if I mentioned our legal system, hey, there's lots of stuff that's not square and uh, level. Um, You've probably seen the the case of Aubrey um, Ahmed Arbery, uh, who was killed in Georgia, it took the police 74 days to charge men. Uh, You know, something's out of square there. So I'm not saying everything's perfect here. But if we are are really candid, it's important that we recognize that we live in a time and place of incredible provision and abundance. Uh, Here's here's a little lighter example, right? Uh, How many of us have an attic or garage full of toilet paper because we stocked up on toilet paper? We were worried about it being available. Or if we think, um, think about how shocking it was, you know, when you, a few weeks ago, when you'd go in the grocery store, and I remember being astonished. Sometimes there wouldn't be milk. Uh, And then pretty regularly, the shelves would be half full, and that felt 
totally weird. It's like every day was a snowstorm uh, because almost every day of the week, normally, we can walk into a grocery store and we can pick between like eight kinds of cow milk, uh, not mentioned soy and almond milk. I mean, we just have an incredible provision here in this country. Um, and so we enjoy a real material abundance. And our, and our passage today in Deuteronomy is about how to live faithfully in material abundance. Um, and the key is to take care that you do not forget the Lord. And I bring this up because we're at a transition point. Um, many of us are a little shell-shocked because of the threat, uh, the physical threat to our health or the health of our loved ones from an illness. And we're not used to that. And we're not used to that because so much of the threat of illness uh, has been buffered against in our society with modern medicine. Uh, so, uh, um, you know, we're also... Uh, uh, set topsy-turvy because we're in the middle of an enormous economic calamity. Uh, you know, it feels, I don't know, what is it like? A, a, it's not really an avalanche or a thundercrack, but it feels like a slow rolling emergency. It's just very different. None of us have lived through an economic situation uh, like the one we're facing now. I mean, a few people were alive in the 30s and were children during the Depression, but this is different than that. Um, and then we have a lot of questions about the inefficiency or the overreaching of government. Man, there is just a lot going on that is really upsetting and disturbing. And now we're re-entering re into social engagement, active social engagement. And in a way, we're, we're kind of like the children of Israel a long, long time ago. Uh, they had been wandering in a wilderness. We're stuck in a wilderness. Uh, and they're getting ready to enter into abundance. Uh, they're, they left behind a great difficulty. And God willing, you know, we're getting ready to enter into better times. Um, you know, hopefully some treatments for this illness will be developed. May, you know, there's a good possibility of a, a vaccine. Uh, so we're, we have reasonable hope for those things. And so how do we live as we're about to enter into a new time? We're in this transition. And how do we live well with abundance? Well, what we need to do is take care not to forget the Lord. Uh, it is the Lord who allowed us to live in a time of abundance. Uh, and uh, it is the Lord who stains us in our difficulty. And it's very easy if, as we return to abundance uh, to forget the Lord. And we need to take care not to forget the Lord. And one of the ways to do that is to acknowledge that it is the Lord who provides for us. Of course, we do that through the gifts that God gives us, human ingenuity, uh, work, uh, investigating God's creation. Um, but we're, we're about to make some big changes. And so, um, you know, we're, you're about to enter hopefully into a time where you can gather again with friends. We can come together to rejoice or even be able to come together in grief, frankly. You know, you're gonna be able to dine at a table that you haven't set to eat meals that you didn't prepare, um, that others have prepared. We need to take care not to forget the Lord. You know, the time is coming soon uh, when you can again sit in the barber's chair or you can get your hair dyed back to its natural color, right? I, I, I know, you know there's roots growing out. I've talked to a couple friends and they're ready, ready to get that hair fixed. Look, all of those things that we are um, we're accustomed to. It seems we're making a transition back to many of them. We're entering into a, a time where we can enjoy the things of life that are part of uh, the abundance that we enjoy. And it's key that we take care not to forget the Lord, that we remember that God provides for us and that God loves us. We have to take care not to forget the Lord. And I, I would say the, the first way to do that is simply be sure to give thanks uh, be sure to give thanks for the good things uh, that you're, you are able to enjoy during the quarantine. Maybe you've discovered some new things that you didn't know uh, you would enjoy being closer. I hope that God's brought that for you. But also, be sure to take care to not forget the Lord uh, when uh, things turn up, when things pick up, when we can show up physically for each other again. Take not to care not to forget the Lord. On Thursday, I, I'm going to try to talk a little bit more about how to do that. But today, I just want to urge you to take care, not to forget the Lord. Well, friends, uh, 
This Sunday, May 24th, we're continuing our same worship schedule. We will be worshiping uh, remotely, uh, virtually, um, on all the usual channels at 8.30. And then at 10.30, we'll still be streaming our services, but also we're having drive-in service. The key to that is that you, you drive into our church facing the office. Stay in your car. Uh, please stay in your car. Just turn it on and run the air condition if you need to. Um, and, and then tune in to 87.9. We're broadcasting the service. We got a new microphone this week, so that, um, we hope that if you're streaming or uh, parked in there, that it'll be a little more clear. Um, and then big news, on the 31st of May, our plan is to, for our 8.30 service, to res resume a socially distant uh, in-person worship in our sanctuary. What does socially distant mean? Well, we're going to have places to sit laid out in the sanctuary. So we're not just going to sit wherever we want. And we just ask, please sit where, where, where we need you to sit. We don't want anyone to get sick. The bulletins will already be there. The ushers won't hand them out. Um, the uh, We're going to ask everyone to wear a mask when we're uh, in there. And, and yeah, I know there's a lot of talk. Do we need to wear a mask? Look, other people don't want your cooties is what it boils down to. We're just looking out for each other and loving each other by doing that. Um, so wear a mask in worship. And then uh, we're going to have a limited seating. There'll be 120 people in our sanctuary. And then we'll have overflow seating so that uh, if if we, you know, we want big people to gather, but we want to do that safely, so we'll have overflow seating. That's the 31st of May, not this Sunday. This Sunday, same pattern. Um, and then at 1030 on the 31st, not this Sunday, the 31st, of May, we're going to gather and have our drive-in service uh, out at the Lake Murray Presbyterian Church meeting place, which is out on a beautiful piece of land, Lake Murray, lots of space. Um, so there'll be details coming in the usual communication streams on how to do that. We hope to see you soon. If you're having trouble with streaming or any of that stuff, please you can give me a call, contact me. We want to make sure you can communicate as possible, as best as is possible. We have a couple of Sunday schools and Bible study classes meeting too, uh, by Zoom, of course, not, not in real space. Uh, and if you want to be a part of those, reach out, uh, reach out to me and I'll, I'll, we'll try to get you connected. Well, I sure miss seeing all of you face to face. Uh, it's nice to be able to connect to a few people. I see uh, uh, my Aunt Mariana is actually out there. Hey, Mariana, hey, Auntie. Um, she's out there and, you know, up in Virginia, my Sarah North, sister Sarah in North Carolina, and then a couple church members, Tony and Hillary. It's great to see y'all too. But I wish we could see each other face to face. Love y'all and miss you. Let's, let's, uh, let's pray together before I go. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would remind us of your good works and your love and most of all, your son, Jesus that as we experience the bounty of uh, where the time and place where we live, that we would give thanks to you. God, give us grateful hearts. And where we see things awry, teach us how we might work to set your world to, to right, to join in your work of restoring your creation. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Love y'all. It's so good to see you. Um, have a wonderful afternoon. And uh, be back here on Thursday. Try to shoot for one o'clock. Uh, but I'll hope to see you then.